Good morning and welcome to everyone. Um, I'm Pastor Cindy Gray and a member of this congregation, so familiar to most of you. And I welcome all the people who are here for Kason's um, baptism. It's a joy to have, have you with us. We have a couple of people who need to make announcements this morning. Becky, do you want to start? Sure. Okay, people, I am overwhelmed with your generosity. Look at our school supply section. It is just phenomenal. We went shopping, brought stuff up there, but this is far greater than what I left behind this last week. I have a sign up sheet for anybody who donated money or supplies that you can sign up your name, uh, email address, and uh, state zip code. I think I can figure that one out. But um, I am really appreciate because I need that for my final report. We do have a problem though, and that problem is overlapping, possibly overlapping generosity. What a problem, people. We have two types of school supplies we're dealing with, school kits we're dealing with, as well as school supplies. And I'm worried that when I move those, our school supplies, up front for blessing for next week, yeah. then I'm going to accidentally take some of the school kit stuff. So if you bought something for the school kit and you see it mingled up with that, the, the collection we have back there, please take it out, put set it to the side so that I don't take this. Oh, there's a table in the basement. Okay, for any of the school kits, the LWR school kits, that stuff goes in the basement. So that means, people, I'm going to be taking everything I see and I'm going to be putting it up here for the blessing, which will be next week. And on top of that, if everybody can wear their thriving shirts, I'd love it. If not, we'll do the old shirt break thing for a photo next week as well. So thanks so much for, to everybody for their participation. COVID is not going to get the best of us. <laughs> Thank you, Becky. You're welcome. Larry. First of all, I want to give greetings to all of you from Kathy. She wants to thank you for your prayers and care and concern. Um, she continues to have uh, difficulty breathing at times and uses the inhaler a lot, especially with uh, smoky days or high humidity days. Uh, so thank you for your care and concern and prayers. Secondly, um, the last meal of uh, everyone's table will be held here at Grace Lutheran Church, at least that's the plans at the moment, on Tuesday, August 17th. Um, in the meantime, we want your input. And there are these sheets on the table and back. Um, we received a special grant from East Central uh, Regional Arts Council of over $5,000 for and when we move into the John Wright building so that we can provide art in that community center. The art input ideas that we are looking for is when you think of sandstone, where do you think of community? And we need your input because Eric Skirts will take pictures of your suggestions, they will be placed on canvas prints that will go into the community center. Someone at on October 17th, we will have an open house and someone will get a canvas photo print and 10 other people will get note cards of all those photos. Eric will also be there, so it will be a chance to greet our old chef <laughs> and uh, see him, and hopefully he'll bring his family along as well. Uh, so please, please do pick up one of these sheets and get it back to us by August 17th. Larry, what you said was the last meal will be here on August 17th. Our first, need to say what's going to the first meal will be at the John Wright building on September 7th. 
the John Wright building has been remodeled, um, updated. We have a commercial kitchen that we will be working from. Um, hopefully, we're expecting that the parking lot there will be blacktop and the lighting will be in place as well for later winter and fall for good lighting to find our way. In order to get there, you need to go around the back of the building, but we'll have directions for so you can, can find this. On Thursday of this week, those of you who have been volunteers are more than welcome to come uh, at 5 o'clock. Uh, from 5 o'clock to 5.30, I and some others will be serving root beer floats. And then at 5.30, we will break into our board meeting. And if you want to stick around for the board meeting, you're more than welcome. Uh, it's a, an exciting group to be a part of. And I thank Grace Lutheran Church for the fantastic support you have given us in providing the space for us, as well as many generous donations to enable this ministry to take place in our community. So thank you all. Larry, I'd like to thank you and all the people that supported you and all the work you did to get this thing started for the last couple of years. And it's really blossomed into a, a great ministry. So thank you. Without you, this wouldn't happen. God, who is rich, I forgot the opening hymn. <laughs> and I love that hymn, so I don't want to miss that. We'll do it after the baptism, okay? okay? God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Who presents this child for the sacrament of holy baptism? We present Kaysen and Wyman at Grace for Baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? 
As you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibility to live with him among God's faithful people, bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, worship. teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that your child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith and life? Amen. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture this child in the Christian faith? as you were empowered by God's Spirit, and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church. I do. Congregation, people of God, do you promise to support Kaysen and pray for him in his new life in Christ? <laughs> I ask you all to profess your faith in Christ Jesus reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Everyone, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And if you would hold your son over the baptism of Father. Kaysen Wyman, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I don't use last names in this baptismal part because he's getting a new family, the Christian family, and he's a child of God. We give you this candle and tell you to let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works 
and glorify your Father in heaven. You are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Now I'd like to present Keith then to his new family. You get to stay in it too. <laughs> And this baptismal gown is, he's the sixth generation to wear it. So over a hundred years old and well known in the family. And we have a big brother who's concerned. I will tell you that. And that's really nice to have a big brother who worries about you. Yes. Ethan Wyman. Is Grandpa's name for a middle name? So, yeah, we see everybody. And everybody gets to see you. And we hope to see you many times in the years to come as you're growing up and come back to visit with us. It'll be wonderful. But I don't want to say so. Because this is always one of my favorite parts. Just holding the baby and getting to look at the baby. Yeah. Okay. 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 I rarely have a two-year-old who um, says no to that, that joy. And, um, but he doesn't know me. Yeah. And I would like to present you with certificates from the congregation, graciously filled out by Diane Seymour, who's had better penmanship than I. <laughs> Thank you. Kendra. Eric. Oh. Okay, <laughs> and um, you might want to dry, let this dry before it goes into the bag. Okay. okay. Um, you can handle these things yeah. too. Okay. Oh, you, you're a mom of two. You've got everything. <laughs> we thank you and we welcome you into God's family. Thank, thank you. you. And you may return to your seats. And now, I'll, oh, you've got the gathering him up already. And it's in the ELW e 532. Let's sing it now.
Christians are called to be imitators of God. This does not mean that Christians are perfect. Rather, the Spirit is at work in our lives so that our actions and attitudes genuinely reflect the love and forgiveness we have received through Christ and his death. So then, putting away falsehood, let us all speak, up, speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you are marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving of one another, as God and Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. In our day and age, we are bombarded with words all the time. The television, the newspaper, and not so much anymore, but radio, text messaging, Facebook, tweets. What other ways do you receive information, words that come at you? We have books in our homes and we go to the library. We see movies or we watch videos and words fly at us from billboards and magazines. Not only can we write letters or emails, we have telephones and people text. And if something significant happens, we hear it over and over again in sound bites. And let's not even talk about commercials. Each day we hear and read so many words that we forget how great an impact words can have on our lives. We don't quite believe just words can do anything. Therefore, how can the Bible call Jesus the Word? 
And how come the word is also the bread of life? Our time and country are so different from Jesus' time. In many ways, we're still the same, but there's quite the difference in communication and in other things. We hardly think of bread as anything too important either. It's primarily a food group that includes macaroni and cereal and um, we cut it back on it to control our carbs. We can eat fast food, Chinese food, Mexican food, takeout food, frozen food, homemade foods. But for centuries, bread was the primary food of the Western world. You might get some fish or meat or cheese, some fruits or vegetables to go with it, but bread was the main part of the meal that satisfied you, satisfied you and filled you up. You've heard bread called the staff of life. It's that staff that a man can lean on to travel over rough ground. The bread of life, the staff, the bread is the staff of life. And the makings for a very simple bread, manna, was what God sent to the Israelites to eat in the wilderness when he freed them from slavery in Egypt. It was bread and quail that they lived on for 40 years until they reached the promised land. When Elijah was ready to give up and die because Jezebel had put a price on his head, God sent him bread to eat. The lesson says cake, but this is one wasn't from a bakery and frosted. It was a kind of bread. Bread and words from an angel. Get up and eat. Get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. Elijah was fed by God, by bread and words. And with that nourishment, he was empowered to take up his task again. Scripture said he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights. We forget how powerful bread and words are. But every one of you can think of a time when you felt the power of words, words that changed your life. In my early 20s, I was uh, floundering a bit, what to do with my life. I had quit college and was working as a checkout at the Woolworth store in town. And one afternoon I was canoeing with my brother and one of his friends, his friend Dave, who said, so, so Cindy, have you found your niche in life working at Woolworth? These words changed my life. Within a week, I was registered to go back to college. Words have power. I love you. Will you marry me? It's a boy. The job is yours. Well, words can also have a negative impact. But words do strike at our hearts and they change our lives forever. We know that's true. And the words, you are forgiven and believe in Jesus and have eternal life are true. Jesus is the ultimate word of God. He is the bread of life, come down to feed us now and nourish us for our life's journey. The one who gives us life for eternity the lessons in John are symbolic and somewhat mysterious. 
but they show us what God is like and how he acts in our lives. Jesus is the living bread that came down from heaven, and the world ate him up. Part of the world ate up every word he spoke and was changed by what they heard. Another part of the world ate him up in other senses. They killed him. But God raised him up again in three days, and the world has been changed forever. Jesus promises to all who believe in him the word of God, the bread of life. He promises us food for our journey and eternal life. You parents and sponsors promised today that you'd make sure that Cayman found out about Cason. Wrong name, I apologize. Cason will find out about the bread of life that he'll have a chance to chew on him, as he'll chew on other things in the next couple years. <laughs> God has promised us food for the journey. Sometimes our journeys get really tough. In our lessons from First King, the prophet Elijah was ready to give up. He just wanted to lay down under that broom tree and die. Yet God did not let him die like he had prayed, but he sent food for his continued journey. In Jesus, the bread of life, we are fed for our journeys. In Ephesians, we heard some of the things, the feelings, the struggles that we face and how we are to be imitators of Christ in dealing with life. You've all heard that saying, you are what you eat. We who eat the bread of life, the teachings of Jesus, are fed to become like Christ, to be imitators of Christ. And the Holy Spirit empowers us to be so much more than we can be on our own. I looked at the words in that passage, and I think, yes, we get an angry, but we must strive not to act in that anger with wars or guns or fists or words. Imitators of Christ are not to let the anger grow inside of them and thus make room for the devil. There's a fable about an old grandfather being asked by his grandson about anger. The grandson says, I know we are to forgive our enemies, but I get so mad. Don't you ever feel that way? The grandfather answers, yes, I know. It's like I have two great wolves struggling inside me. And one wolf fights and argues for revenge. And the other wolf argues for forgiveness. It's a great battle between them. The grandson then asks, which one wins? And the grandfather answers, the one I feed. The writer of Ephesians urges us not to let the sun go down on our anger. It's another way of saying, don't feed the wrong wolves. Don't sit and think about all the reasons that you have to be angry or hateful. But feed on the word of God. There's so much more advice in this passage. Don't steal. That one seemed pretty obvious. 
but work honestly so that you can share with the needy. Watch what you say. Don't let evil talk come out of your mouth. So that the words encourage others to share in the bread of life. Put away bitterness, wrath, anger, wrangling, slander, and malice. Those things that are products of anger. You know, sometimes it seems like God asks way too much of us. And that's why we need bread for the journey. So that we might be kind, tender-hearted, and forgiving of one another. For God has forgiven us. Therefore, we are strengthened to live in love, imitating Christ to the best of our ability, and asking for more bread when we don't have that strength. Asking for the eternal life, the, et the bread of life, for the power and the strength to offer forgiveness. So let us feed on him, his teachings that change us, his communion meal that reminds us we are forgiven and fed. His promises that give us hope now and into eternal life. Amen. Our hymn of the day is we are baptized in Christ Jesus.
for the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission centers, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel, for congregations facing difficult decisions about their future, God in their mercy. Yeah. For the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution and all who lack clean water, God in our mercy. Here we are. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice. For corrections officers and prison chaplains, that they will deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God in our mercy. Here we are. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys uncertain about the future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick, especially the family of Judy Zimmerman, God in her mercy. For this assembly gathered around your table, we pray. For those among us who baked bread and prepared the vessels for our communion celebration, for those who bring the food from this table to those who are homebound or hospitalized, God in your mercy. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we pray, we pray to you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. God in your mercy. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Peace of Christ be with you all. I want to share so with you. I want to share God's peace. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. The body of Christ given for you. May this, the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you strength for your journey, that you may live in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is O Living Bread from Heaven, number 542.
in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.